half past eight. Half past eight. shift on BBC Radio <laughs> and now exactly 10.30. You late? What? You late? Only by what? What? Three minutes? Twelve thirty. You said you're the one who's a stickler for punctuality. All right, so I'm late. Yes, father. Uh, I'll have a pint, please. Don't... No, I'll have a lager, please. Right. Uh, you're all right, are you? No, no, no. I'll have another pint. Oh, a uh, pint, please, <laughs> and um, a, a beef sandwich, roast beef sandwich with lots of chutney and a pickled onion. You'll be going home to lunch, will you? Yeah, well, not yet a while. I'll have a pasty, Gloria, please, and a cheese sandwich, a scotch egg, and a packet of crisps. <laughs> Is that all? How many sausages? Ah, just cooked. Two with mustard. Right. My round, is it? It would have been a different story if you'd have been in here earlier. No, it wouldn't. It'd been the same story only three minutes earlier. Why are you late? Well, do you stop going on about me being late? I've been at work, haven't I? Some of us have to go out at work, you know, for a living. This is my lunch hour. So it's ten minutes for lunch and fifty minutes for indigestion. You should lay off the pickled onions. I'll have yours. I can see me getting an ulcer, you know, the way I'm going. I've been on the Craigley estate all morning. I've got to go back to the office now, make some phone calls, load up the car with theodolites, pick up John Armstrong, drive 30 miles up the A1, survey a new site. I won't be home till 8 o'clock. Then I've got to take Thelma out to dinner. You'll give yourself an ulcer the way you're going. <sighs> 30 miles up the A1 and it's bitter out. Oh, I noticed that coming over here from the billiard hall. That wind goes <laughs> right through you. <laughs> oh, poor you. I'm out all day, you know, out on some freezing barren site. Well, never mind. Get that down, you. Nanook of the North. Oh, I don't pay for it. No, 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 no. My round, my round. Never let it be said. It's my fiver. Well, I'm only borrowing it so I can get me round. <laughs> How much is that, Gloria? That'll be 82p, Pet. Right. That's 82p I owe you. Oh, well, cheers. Aye, these sausages look good, though, but It's very bad for you, you know, rushed meals standing up. I'm in no rush. Of course you're in no rush. You've got nothing to rush for. You've got nothing to do till the first racing results come in. Right. 418. Oh, I'll take Terry, that, love. Four. My change? Well, I know, I know. I might as well make it a round figure. I owe you a fiver. <laughs> what about the two quid you borrowed off me last Tuesday? Oh, I see, I see. It's like that, is it? I see. Right, what? Last Tuesday you borrowed two quid off me. It's not unreasonable to ask you to pay me back. Have I ever not paid you back? Have I ever not paid you back? You never pay me back. <laughs> or if you do, you give me three quid and borrow four. You've got a permanent overdraft with me. All right, all right. That's two pounds I owe you. Seven. Seven? What about the fiver you've just had off me? Well, good God, man, I've only just borrowed off you. You don't want to back already, do you? I only mentioned it. Here, here, here. There. Where did you get that? It's mine, it's mine. I won it this morning at the billiard hall. I beat Tommy Pratt in three straight frames. Well, then why did you want to borrow a fiver off me? You try buying a new pair of shoes these days under a fiver. <laughs> How about Well, sorry, I'm just a bit short, that's all. You, you've still got that fiver. Well, not now, I haven't, have I? Not after that round. 
Well, I'll pay for the round. What was the round? Eighty? A pound, near as damage. All right, all right, here. And we'll take it off what I owe you, that two pounds from Tuesday. That's a pound I owe you. Is it? <laughs> right. <laughs> You're gonna buy some new shoes, were you? Well, I was. Not now, obviously. What do you want new shoes for? I just need something decent to wear, man. Something respectable. Something to go for job interviews in and such like. Something to keep the wet out. Here, here, here. No, 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 I couldn't. Not if you're short. I'm not that short. I can't see without soles to your feet. Go on. All right, then, mate. Cheers. Just till Friday. That's a five, I owe you. Six. Oh, yes, right, six, six. <laughs> Just till Friday. Uh, uh, do you fancy a short? No, no, I better not. Not with that drive. Uh, quite right, you can't be too careful. You'll be going back to the billiard hall, I suppose. Oh, just till four, then I'm going to the pictures. Look at you. What's on? I don't know. I just fancy the usherette. Anyway, I like going to the pictures in the afternoon. There's never anybody there except a few pensioners, and they're always asleep. And it's nice and warm and comfortable, and you come out just in time for the racing results. <laughs> what a life. You know, I never stop these days. I never stop. I was up till one last night, studying. Studying what? Night school. I've got exams end of the month. Well, that's your own rotten fault if you still want to go to school at your age. Some of us need qualifications. To pay for mortgages, to buy cars, to give Thelma a future. To support shoeless ex-servicemen. <laughs> you give yourself an ulcer the way you're going. Perhaps I shouldn't drink lager. It's not the lager, mate, it's the worry. I've seen it all before. Ulcers at 30, coronary at 40. The only future Thelma's got to look forward to is when your life insurance coughs up. <laughs> What kind of future are you going to... What are you going to leave your wife, eh? A few old IOUs, torn betting slips and stubs from the Odeon? Well, I'll tell you one thing, mate. I shall outlive you, because I have dropped out of the rat race. You what? You what? You were never in it, you. <laughs> You've been on the doll since you came out of the army. No attempt to look for a job. Well, I'm happy enough. There's nothing wrong with my existence. I bet you'd rather be going to the pictures this afternoon than going 30 miles up the A1 to some barren freezing moor to stick up your theodolite. <laughs> Look, Terry, I haven't said this for a while. Said what? What I'm about to say. Which you haven't said for a while. Yes, right. Well, go on, then. Well, I've forgotten what I was going to say now. I don't... <laughs> Where was I? I don't know. It's a while back now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, speaking as a friend, as someone whose opinion I hope you respect, I... I think it's time you got your thinking cap on, my lad. I think it's time you found a job, or at least you made some attempt to look for one. I offered you a job, all right. You're too proud, I can understand that. But there are other jobs, Terry. Ever since you came out the army... The army you... took a lot out of me, Bob, as well you know. Five years I did. Surely the state owes a man something after five years. So how long do you need to read? You can't spend all your days in bed, you know, the bookies or some musty cinema or... or playing snooker. Or playing snooker. Or fishing in the canal. Or fishing in the canal. Or going to the races or chatting up the girls on the trading estate or kicking a ball about with some of the lads or going to the baths or fooling about on the putting green at Priory Park or watching the girls play netball through the grey into the grammar school. <laughs> What's the matter? What a pathetic, bloody existence. Yeah, I've got to go. I've got to go. You'll kill yourself. You will. You'll kill yourself. I know. I will. The rate I'm going. On the other hand, Bob, death is nature's way of telling you to slow down. <laughs> this place reminds me... Alan, are you listening? <laughs> I was just Sorry, this place reminds me very much of that club in Rimini. Does it? Well, I suppose so. It's full of Italian waiters. <laughs> I didn't like Rimini very much. Very touristy. Oh, you were there at Easter, weren't Ooh. you? No, no, August. Uh, and Easter we were in Albufera. Oh, we were thinking of going there for the summer. Oh, it's very lovely. Mm. Mind you, we were there earlier in the year. I'm told in the summer it does get very touristy. Ooh. Either there or Morocco. I believe the desert's very wonderful. That used to be. But all them charter trips go there now. And, of course, uh, you've got your Arab. Well, of course, we're very limited with Bob's hay fever, aren't we, darling? Bob. Well, what? Hey, Bob, what? are we keeping you up? So rude. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We've got that much on at work, you know. I can hardly keep awake. I am sorry. He has been working hard, poor pet. He's got exams, you know. Well, he takes it too seriously. You want to learn to enjoy yourself, Bob. You want to learn to relax a bit more. Oh, yes, it's all right for you with your own business. Do you know it's a pound of drink in here? Oh, well, that's just a cover charge, isn't it? 
For a pound a drink? <laughs> yes, but on the other hand, it does keep out the riffraff. Go on, my son, I'll get him in. How <laughs> it, Bex, how it? I'm not so sure. No, What's Collier no, doing in here at these no, prices? No, all right, by the look of it. Who's that he's got with him? Uh, he can't stages. afford it here. Uh, I had to lend him a fiver at lunchtime. Oh, you did Not again. No, I'm sorry, he said he needed some new shoes. You're no. a fool to yourself. Well, he's buying a whacking big round, I'll tell you that. And three Contiki cocktails. Contiki cocktails. Not that she's not worth it, mind you. He said they were letting the wet in. I'm sure I've seen that girl somewhere before, haven't you, Alan? No, I'd have remembered. <laughs> She's quite attractive, in an obvious sort of way. Yes, <laughs> everybody's wearing that material. <laughs> <laughs> I say she's got some form on her, Bob, eh? She's got some form on her. <laughs> He's paying for that whole round. Where does he get it from? He gets it from you. It's not a loan you give him each week, it's an allowance. You're a fool to yourself. But all I want to know is where does he get her from? Hey, up, get her. Hello, Bob. Hello, Thelma. Alan. Sorry. And Brenda. That's a nice change, a night out with a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to meet a very special friend of mine. This is Madeline. Madeline, this is Brenda, Alan, Bob, and Thelma. Madeline. Right now, let me get you all a drink. Come on, now, what are you going to have? What are you going to have? Oh, well, uh, uh, I wouldn't say no. No, I think we must go, Terry. Thanks all the same, because Bob's very tired. I'm all right. How do you mean? You could hardly keep awake a few minutes ago. Well, I'll have one. No. What? <laughs> I really think we must go. Alan, the sitter. What about her? She won't mind. No, but it is getting late. I mean, you must think of other people. I am thinking of other people. I'm thinking of the sit there on when her boyfriend's come down, that corporal. He's not driven all the way down from Catrick just to watch the epilogue. <laughs> <laughs> all the more reason. Oh, hey, oh, hey. I'm in the chair. It's my round. It's my well, round. I really think we must go, Terry. Thanks all the same. We'll go and get our coat, shall we, Brenda? <laughs> well, where have you been hiding yourself, love, eh? Not that you're hiding much. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get many of them to the pound. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't finish work till 11. What do you do, then? I'm in a shred at the audience. Oh, your afternoon wasn't wasted, then. <laughs> Give us some chips, Terry Pet. I like the roulette, you know. I don't go mad, I just play on evens, but I like the roulette. Hey, I love you. Just change yourself that. Thanks, Terry. Have a nice time. ta -ra, then. <laughs> ta <-ra. laughs> Nice one, Terry. Not bad, eh? Not bad. <laughs> Did you really pull her in the pictures? No, during the interval. Well, it beats a drink on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then, what are you going to have to drink, eh? No, you're all right. I think I'll just go and watch the roulette for a little bit. Yeah. Cheers. She has that effect on people. Didn't you feel your adrenaline rising when you clocked that? Yeah. You are very flush all of a sudden, aren't you? No, no, no. Little windfall. Little windfall. No new shoes, I see. Ah, what I was going to, Bob, I was literally on my way to the shoe shop when I ran into Little Hutch. He asked after you, said I was Thelma. Yes, yes. And he says to me, have you got any spares? I said, well, I've got a little, but I must buy myself a new pair of shoes. And he says to me, never mind about the shoes. You put all you've got on Domino at the 415 at Fontwell. And you did. I did, I did, but I doubled it with knock meal down at the 5 o'clock at York. You jammy Arab. How much did you get? Enough, enough. That was my money, you know. Money out of my pocket. So unfair. Oh, here, here, here. There's your fiver. Six. <laughs> all right, all right. Six, six. Good God. If you take my advice, you will put all that on the first race tomorrow at Hexham. Kill Venny. Oh, wait. Over here. Your money won't last in places like this. Do you know how much it costs a drink? <laughs> it's a pound. <laughs> it's a pound of drink in here. Yeah, yeah well, it keeps the riffraff out. Oh, then, uh... Don't go pouring your money down that thing. Oh, have you got any change? What? Have you got any change? Five please. <laughs> Come on, just a loan, just a loan. Not much. Oh, that's all yeah, I've got. Yeah, good lad, good lad. It's money down the drain, that is, you know. Look, what's the point of winning money and then pouring it away? You can't win on these things. If you were alone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, kiddo. <laughs> Bob? Hmm? You all right? Yes, I'm all right. You look tired. Have you not been sleeping? Not very well, no. <clears throat> oh, it's not that. Is it worth it? That's what I've got to keep asking myself, Wendy. Is it worth it? Is what worth it? When you get married, you know, there's so many things you have to do. 
I don't mean, mean extra responsibilities. I mean the sheer volume of things you have to do. I have to study. I have to go out to work. I have to get a new house together. I have to fill in forms and dig borders and buy insurance and plant daffodils. I've got to paint the garage and service the car and lay linoleum. <laughs> claim rebates on the rates. <laughs> I have to pass exams. And worry about whether I can afford to take Thelma to Morocco in August. <laughs> and I think I've got a cold coming on. <laughs> Who? My boyfriend, Gordon. Gordon? You met him at the firm's Christmas party. Oh, him. The bad-tempered one. He was just a bit suspicious. Look, if I want a quiet talk with my secretary in the stationery cupboard, that's my business. <laughs> I couldn't give dictation with all that noise going on. No, Bob. It was Christmas. Gordon's trying to get the car ready. It's an old one, you see, but he's very good mechanically. If he does, we're going to go to Holland and Belgium. Gordon says Holland and Belgium's very flat, so there'll be no risk of gradients. It's not very good on gradients. Yes, well, uh... Last year, we went to Scotland, but he had a motorbike then, so it didn't mind the gradients. But when he had a scooter, we could go anywhere. The Peak District, the Lake District. You've had a pretty up-and-down affair with that, Gordon, haven't you? <laughs> And now it's all gonna level out, just like life, just like life. Don't play it safe, Wendy. Get the motorbike back and go to the Alps. But well, we couldn't afford the petrol for the Alps. <sighs> we'll not afford a holiday this year. You never know. That horse might come up. I doubt it. I doubt it. I gave the money to the tea boy. It'll be running now, won't it? <laughs> if it started. <laughs> all right, Wendy, come on. Tick-tock, time is money. I'd just like to say one thing, Bob. What? Well, I know it's none of my business, but if you are short of money, gambling's not the answer. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Hello, Terry. Well, I was, uh, I was just passing, kid. Uh... Yeah, th that'll be all, Pet. Thank you. Oh, it's Pet now, is it? <laughs> you can't be too formal. Yeah, especially since the firm's Christmas party. Who told you that? Oh, keep your <laughs> vest on. Keep your vest on. Your secret's safe with me. Oh, do you want them biscuits? Yeah, go on. I couldn't eat a thing. I'm sorry I could make a pub at lunchtime, mate, but I've just got so much on. You look tired. Knackered. Never mind, kid. It'll all be worth it one day. One day? One day? Why does everybody go on about a mythical one day? Is it some stage in the distant future your whole life comes together and adds up? Makes sense. You've got the right idea. Live now. Enjoy yourself. How did you get hold of that Madeline? I didn't. <laughs> did it? No. I met her from work. I took her to this Chinese restaurant where she went through the card. I don't know, she keeps her form. All them noodles she took away. <laughs> and to that club, it's a pound a drink there, you know. Don't tell me, don't tell me. She must have had at least six Contiki cocktails. I'm surprised she wasn't afloat. Then I gave her money for chips to play roulette, which she did very nicely, thank you very much. I showed her the finer points of blackjack. We had a steak sandwich, a bottle of fizzy wine, and then, when the time came for her to show her appreciation in no uncertain manner, I got that. <laughs> Biggie. Can you take her home? How can I take her home? I haven't got a car, have I? What about a taxi? Didn't have enough money for a taxi. <laughs> you didn't blow the lot. No, oh, but I did. How? Mostly on the finer points of blackjack. <laughs> Why didn't she offer to pay for a taxi? Well, she got a lift. And this Italian wine waiter called Dante. Well, he took me and all. Well, it's not very dignified, you know, Bob. When you go out with a girl and you get taken home penniless into the back of some Mai Tai's van. <laughs> you blew the lot. Ah, oh, no, I oh, know, I'm a fool to myself. But one good thing did come out of it. It's made me see sense. It's made me realise that I've got to get me thinking cap on and... Well, that's why I'm here. How do you mean? Well, you said something about a job. Yes, right. Sure. 
It's not here, mind. It's on a, a new estate up near Durham. You'd have to go up there and see the foreman. No, I don't mind. I'll go now. Just give us the address. Are you sure? Absolutely positive. Well, I'm delighted. I'm very glad, kidder. Not just for yourself, but because, well, for me too. I was... I was beginning to have doubts. Well, if I can help somebody as I pass Yes, along. yes. <laughs> You've got to believe in... one day. You can't just spend all your time frivolously with usherettes and... reckless spending and pointless gambling. True. True. It won, Bob. Kill Lenny, it won. What? 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 You won six pounds, 42p. Yes, well, thank you very much, Miss Shearer. Perhaps next time you'd knock before barging in here. Oh, oh yes, Bob. Uh, Mr. Ferris. You jammy Arab, you were on it. <laughs> well, weren't you? What with? And it was the one Friday my, my mum didn't leave any money in the milk bottle for the milkman and all. <laughs> well, there's the address. You've got to see Joe Pearson. He's the gaffer. Well, am I going to get there? <laughs> You'll have to take the bus, won't you? Or a train. You don't think you could see your way clear? No. Well, just for the train fare. I'd pay you back out of my wages. I mean, I'd be working out of my wages. Well... What's my tip? All right, take the pound, then. Oh, I may as well take the five and make it a round figure. Well, what am I left with? Well, more than you started with. And if I was you, I would put that on Sesame in the 4.30 this afternoon. You're doing it again. Only if I was you, I said. Only if I was you, not if I was me. I've seen the error of my ways, remember? Well, I hope so. Shall I come round tonight? We can have a swift off to celebrate my new career. No, I can't tonight. I've got evening classes, haven't I? Oh. Hey, should I put down for them? What? Evening classes, the ones you go to, I could come with you. But I'm in the middle of a course. You have to decide on a course. You have to take a course. Yeah? Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I'll tell you what. You, um, you get me the enrolment form, the, uh, the, what is it, the syllabus, and I'll pick one. Pick one? Pick one? Yeah. Accountancy, carpentry. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Put me down for elementary Italian. Elementary Italian? Yeah, then I can tell that wine waiter what he can do with his coke. <laughs> Hello, kid. What are you doing here? Just dropped by. Well, I'm just on my way to evening classes. You're looking very smart. Present. Who for? For you. For you and Thelma, from me. Champagne. Champagne? Well, sort of. It's supposed to be champagne. It's like champagne. It costs 163 a bottle. <laughs> well, thank you very much, mate. But why? Is it for getting the new job? What job? The job I've put you up for. Oh, that! No, no, um... I arranged Yes, it. yes, I know, kid, I know, and I know you mean well. But the thing is... Well, I'm a tradesman, kid. If I go for a job, it's got to be a trade. Well, you don't want to see me scrabbling about a building site like some motorway mick now, do you? I gave you the train fare. <laughs> which I owe you, and which I am very happy to say I am now in a position to pay you back. And I'll tell you one thing. If I had gone for that job, I would not have been in a position to pay you back. Thank goodness. Thank goodness I said to myself that not going to that job has put me in a position whereby I can pay back my friend Bob the five pounds I owe him. Where did you get all that money? All that money, where did you get it? Ah, uh, well, when I left your place, I was going to the station. I was literally on my way to the station when I ran into the lodge. He asked after you, said I was Thelma. Yes, yes, he gave you a tip. He did, he did. Well, I couldn't ignore it, Jim. Not after the one yesterday. Well, it can't have been Sesame, the one you gave me. What do you mean? Because the four-legged idiot was left at the gate, wasn't it, with my rotten £1.42p on its rotten nose? Oh, well, there you go, kidda. It's one of life's bitter ironies. Still, you are five pounds up on a day. You put my money on a horse. The money I gave you for a train... The money was supposed to start you off on a new life. But it did, kid. It did. It started me off on a treble, a treble. I want a bundle, man. And that's why I want to take you out to dinner. You and Thelma, anywhere you like, we want you to come with us. We? Uh, me and Linda, she's outside in her car. Who's Linda? She's the girl that works in the betting shop. She's a nice girl, a really <laughs> nice lass. As a matter of fact, I've been seeing quite a lot of her recently. Well, of course you have. You spend your whole rotten life in that betting shop. 
come on, kiddo. Come on, get Thelma. Thelma is out, isn't she? And I've got night school. Oh, you can skip it for once. It's not a question of just once. I've got exams, haven't I? I've got exams. You'll have a breakdown, you will. <laughs> your health will go first, then your marriage. There is nothing wrong with my marriage. Well, sh Thelma's out on her own tonight without you. You said so yourself. You can't expect Thelma to stop him when I'm out studying, can you? She's only gone to badminton. Ha! <laughs> badminton? Things can happen there same as anywhere else. Don't let that drippy lot fool you just because they wear white shorts and drink lemon barley. <laughs> what do you mean, things? Bob, when a wife starts taking second place to her husband's career, she begins to look for outlets. You're playing mixed doubles at the badminton club, don't you? Yes. With you and Janie? Yes. So who's taking your place tonight? Only Hugh's brother. Only Hugh's brother? Good God, anything could happen. <laughs> Not at the Beverly Badminton Club. The committee would never allow it. <laughs> oh, Bob, I can see it all. By the time you've qualified, it'll be too late. By then, she'll be off sharing someone else's shuttlecock. <laughs> would you just go? Would you just take Linda, whoever she is, and go and blow your winnings, and don't come to me in the morning when it's all gone, and you can't even steal your mother's milk money? I wash my hands of you. I, I give up. Go on. I've, I've had it now. I've tried to give your life some kind of meaning, some kind of direction, but all you want to do is go to pubs or pictures or... Restaurants. Or restaurants, yes. Or nightclubs. Have nights out with the lads. Playing late-night snooker or all-night poker. Or going to discotheques. Dimly lit discotheques where you can sit thigh to thigh to some sexy girl like Linda or Madeline. <laughs> Or any girl, or so many of them spare up here, if you've got a bit of money and prepared to put it about a bit of a night. What a lovely, bloody life you lead. 